This is what racism looks like. This glass of milk believes it is the superior drink. It receives more privileges simply because of how it looks. From the get-go, it sits higher on the table. And over time, it inevitably receives higher pay, better access to loans, better housing, better education, more hiring opportunities, and other benefits that I just don't have enough coasters for. This is what colorism looks like. These cups of coffee came from the same coffee beans from the same tree. They have the same flavor, have the same aroma, and they have the same nutrients. Nutrients. But when you realize this cup of coffee is lighter, it's assumed that it's better than the other cup. The term colorism has been around for decades. In 1983, Alice Walker wrote about the damage colorism can cause when those of the same race are judged simply by the shade of their skin. She warned that it can set communities back in their fight against racism. Racism and colorism are both dangerous, power-wielding concepts that can be harmful to a person's mental health or quality of life. It's funny you should mention Matthias. Actually, I personally wasn't impressed by his presence in Frozen 2 because it really did feel like pointless tokenizing. Um, it felt like they just threw him in there because everyone complained that there weren't enough people of color in the first movie. I wasn't really one of those people that complained because I did think it's a story that takes place in like Scandinavia. It doesn't make sense for there to be black people there. I would rather you tell stories that are centered in places where there would have been black people rather than expect black people to be randomly placed in these clearly like Icelandic traditions. Also, there was um, the element of the indigenous people in the story, the North Aldra, or which are basically based on the Sami people. And we find out that Elsa and Anna's mother was that. So the idea that Elsa and Anna are uh, culturally or racially mixed and they're part indigenous would have been a cool thing to explore. And they didn't. They really didn't. I know I usually like to give black men advice, but this time I just have some words for you guys. I really need you guys to understand that when black women especially start to speak on our own experiences and things that we went through and some of the things that some of you put us through, it is not in any way, shape, or form denouncing anything that you've been through. And I really need you guys to understand that it is okay to feel upset and to feel angry about things that have happened to you in the past. I really need you guys to allow yourself to have that space to say, hey, I didn't like that this happened to me. I was actually really hurt about that. It's okay to do that. And I really need you guys to find spaces to go and be able to talk about that, whether that be with one of your homies and like be open enough to have conversations like that, or whether it be with like your partner or someone. You just need to find some space that you can have healthy, productive conversations around that trauma so you can grow. And as always, it's out of love. How we got Lillian. Lillian came after one of our most heartbreaking moments in foster care. A sibling group of three had just moved back home with their parents. We were empty nesters and heartbroken. We got a call that there was a three day old baby that needed to be picked up at the hospital. Mind you, this never happens in foster care. So me and mom life patients took off like a jet and went down to the hospital. And there we met baby Lillian. She was so tiny, and a little bit over a year later, we adopted her for forever. It's kind of funny though, because she's exactly like Mom Life Patience, and she's the spitting image of Mom Life Patience's mom. This is gonna fly by, so baby just hold on. Won't be like this for long Shout out to Maddie <laughs> Maddie You burned your uncle's confederate flag Girl You are straight lit Black Lives Matter You were invited to the cookout for real Oh baby 
I hate when people come and tell you that someone says something about you, but they're like, oh, I can't tell you who said it. Did you sign a non-disclosure agreement? Because if you can't provide me with all of the receipts, when, where, why, how, I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me nothing if you can't tell me the full information. Because you know what? This is not a puzzle for me to be putting pieces together. Did you not learn anything from school? If you're going to make a report, you cite your sources. Come correct. So Brave is honestly on the same platform as Frozen for me in terms of it's a story set in Scotland so I'm fine with the characters being white because they're Scottish that makes sense but like what's the reason that there haven't been as many or really any stories that are centered in places like places in Africa like you can have a Scottish story with Scottish people who are white I'm not offended by that, but could you also maybe have a story set in Kenya? Like, what's stopping you? It's not so much, it's like the stories you choose to make are so white. It's not so much that I need black characters in stories that would feature white people logically and historically. It's just that you also you don't also tell the stories of people that would have historically not been white. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected one, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. uses a black girl to make themselves look good for this but then my mom who's black goes over there starts taking pictures of trees and then she starts getting harassed by the president this does not make sense i start taking pictures of trees i was taking pictures of tall pine trees she was driving she literally she literally was going in and she stops and she asked me excuse me excuse me what a can I help you? And I didn't even know what to say. I said, I said, hello, hi. And she says, what are you taking pictures of? What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? Can I help you? And I said, I'm going for a walk with my nephew and we're taking pictures of trees. I, I, I don't, it doesn't sound right. You don't just stop. I'm mixed race. I'm half Vietnamese and half Italian, which means I'm not Italian enough for my Italian friends, and I'm not Asian enough for my Asian friends. But also, I live in the French part of Canada, so I'm too Anglophone for my province, but I'm too French for my country. So where do I go? Things black people say when they're ready for you to go home. What time is it? You ain't tired yet? We gonna be sleeping tomorrow. What you doing tomorrow? So like originally I thought it was a meme or something, but no, some of y'all are really out here acting like some grade A premium clowns fresh off of Bozo's Bonanza trying to say white people can't be racist because they abolished slavery. Y'all are not about to try to take credit for abolishing slavery, but absolutely no responsibility for being a part of the system to begin with. 
If I punch you in the face and then give you a band-aid, am I a hero? Please. Just not... Just don't. Cease. Can we also talk about how COVID is dangerous enough to let prisoners out, but safe enough to let schools back in? Ugh, it's so ghetto here. Actually, the reason why many tourists get sick abroad, not just in India, is not because of poo hands, it's because of the drinking water. Different countries have different ways of filtering their drinking water, and in many countries, the specific strains of bacteria that are in the water are safe for the residents to drink because they're used to those bacterias, but we are not, so we cannot drink them because the water in the UK is filtered differently. Many visitors to India and other places get caught up in this by either drinking tap water, brushing their teeth with tap water, drinking ice made out of tap water, eating salad that's washed with tap water, or for example in India eating street food like Bani Budi that is prepared with tap water. There's 187 countries where you can't drink the tap water. Comparatively, there's very few where you can. Maybe that's because the developed world hoards resources and money. The easiest way to stay safe abroad is to stick to bottled water and not be racist like this guy. You'll never be alone. I'll be with you from dust till dawn. I'll be with you from dust till dawn. Oh baby, I'm right here. You'll never be alone. I'll be with you from dust till Back in elementary, I loved when a kid in my class had a birthday. Because you know what that means. Their parents come to school with cake, cupcakes, drinks for the whole class. Even if you didn't know the kid, it didn't matter. Everyone's getting a slice and having a chill day. Can we please stop pretending like the All Lives Matter isn't a literal counter movement? Like they don't care about the kids in cages. They don't care about the people dying because of lack of healthcare. They don't care about the victims of state section violence. They only exist to counter Black Lives Matter and that's it. I was doing this online lecture and I got a question wrong. And the professor said, well, let's ask this other student because they're actually smart. I was hurt by that, but I was like, okay, let's just keep going. Later on, I answered another question that was actually correct, but he couldn't hear me. And he said, do you know the difference between an idiot and a genius? An idiot whispers their responses. So next time, speak up. Even if you're wrong, just say it with confidence so that people sense. think I'm that not you're smart. For the I feel I'm not humiliated. I'm not in it for the kids. This is just I'm not another side of medicine. That I want you guys to see and be a part of. <laughs> Hey guys, so my recent post about having a Russian mom completely blew up and you kept asking me, are you adopted? How are you not white? How did your parents meet? Do you speak Russian? what? I'm here to give you some answers. Let's go! In the 1960s, the Republic of Congo was under a socialist regime and in 1965, they established a special relationship with the Soviet Union whereas they would receive scholarships for their smartest students to go all the way to Russia to study mathematics, sciences, and engineering. And this is how my grandpa was able to go to Russia, meet my babushka, they fell in love and got married! And then they had my mom! Hi! Hello! Привет всем! Борщ был не красный, потому что вчерашний. Когда он спит, он все теряет. So here it is, I'm not a spy, I'm not adopted, I'm Russian and Congolese. And for those of you that were like, ah, ты говоришь по-русски, говоришь ты по-русски, да, я говорю по-русски, тогда кто слышал, то молодец! If white people can have stories that don't center around them being white, then people of color should have stories that don't center around them being people of color. Your friends don't hate you. Go take a nap. Your friends don't hate you. Go eat a snack. Your friends don't hate you. Go drink water. Your friends don't hate you. You are not a bother.